Uh, hey everyone, how are we doing out there today? This is the Flip Flop Investor Show and I am your host, Todd Bayer, the Flip Flop Investor himself. Every week we get together and talk about real estate investing here in the Inland Empire. I like to bring on a local real estate investor and we talk about who they are and what they do in the industry. And uh, we got a first timer this time. Uh, we've been having a lot of repeat guests lately, but today we got a newbie. Uh, not a newbie in real estate, but a newbie to the show. First timer here. First timer. In the house. Isaac Mesa. How you doing, man? Hey, guys. I'm doing good. Good. Awesome. Thanks for having me. This is uh, exciting. You know, I've never been on radio before, so. You've never been on radio? Come on. That's, you know, that's the new thing that people are doing these days. You know, it's, <laughs> forget these podcasters out there. It's all about old-fashioned AM, FM radio. <laughs> so, yeah, the Vine, Vine is out, YouTube's out, all that so, stuff. Those things are all going AM bye radio bye. is where it's at. AM radio is where <laughs> things are going. Everybody knows. If you want to make a way for yourself, get into AM radio right now. Um, no, but, you know, actually, the AM radio band is still very much alive. People actually yeah. are, are tuning in right now. We got several, what, we got like, what, almost 100,000 people tuning in right now, probably something around there. Yeah. I'm looking at the board op, Nick, because Nick, he's the one, you know, he's got the live uh, feed going on. He can see exactly what's happening out there in the world. Um, <laughs> you know, I, me here in the, in the booth, uh, I, I have no idea. I'm just assuming people are listening. So yep, yep. Uh, for those of you that are listening, thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, so, okay, let's jump right into it. We talk about real estate investing on the show. Uh, flip-flops are optional. You don't have to wear flip-flops. Okay. Isaac chose to wear nice shoes uh, and a jacket. So yeah, for those I, of you watching on YouTube, even though the YouTube thing is going to disappear here in a year or two, I guarantee it. No. <laughs> uh, for those of you watching on YouTube or any of the other places where the video is seen, Isaac's dressed much nicer than I, me. I did opposite of flip-flops and a t-shirt. I, exactly. I almost went full suit and you know, nice shoes. Hey, you look good, man. You look good. You got layers on because it's cold out, you know. All the things I probably should have done, but whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting really good at this parkour thing, oh, okay. trying to evade puddles in my flip flops. Yeah, we were walking across yeah puddles together on the way in. Yeah, yeah, puddle hopping. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, okay. you know about parkour. You, every time you try to do parkour, you have to yell parkour. Do while you you're doing it? Yeah, it doesn't count if you don't yell parkour when you're doing it. You know, it's, it's funny. Just number one rule of parkour. And this is a completely different, you know, side note. <laughs> and, you know, we'll talk about real estate. Like, we'll get there. We're always so on topic on this show. We're always so good about it. You know, we have I have, I have notes prepared numerous <laughs> every single time. Uh, but <laughs> I remember years ago, before they started calling it parkour, they called it extreme walking. Oh yeah, I remember that. Do you yep. remember that? Yep. Like I saw a thing on like MTV way back in the day <laughs> where these guys are, you know, and I just thought like, like okay, it's, you're just doing funny tricks, like, but you have no skateboard or rollerblades or anything. You're just walking. Okay. Yeah, that's extreme funny. walking. I remember that. Extre <laughs> it, I remember that. Yeah, it became parkour. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think it might have been middle school for me, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Um, then I was in elementary because you're older, so I couldn't have been in high school. I had to have been younger. Possibly. Than you. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just heard about it before you because I'm so with it. You know, yeah. I'm with these times. You know, I'm always on the bandwagon before these things yeah, happen. That's why it. I got into radio. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you all for tuning in. This is the Flip Flop Investor Show. <laughs> <laughs> investment. Everything about investment. <laughs> exactly. Everything when about talk to it. Right. So, okay. So the burning question that everybody always has is, who the heck is Isaac Meza and why are we listening to him? So... I guess we like to start off, like, how'd you get into the real estate investing world? Great. Um, wow. So I've uh, kind of been working my way in for uh, a while now, trying to break in. I came from uh, the world of reality TV. Reality TV. Yeah, I was doing that for the last 13 years. 13. So, so, you, so you actually filmed, like, some of the shows... Like some of the shows that you yeah that you could recognize yeah I um some of these I, like like uh, real estate investing type shows before yeah there's a couple yeah there's a couple of that is all kinds of stuff that you, you know I don't want to drop any names of here course, but yeah. you know there's some well known shows that I worked on for the last 13 years it was great it's fun now did did those shows influence you at all like like watching these shows and like watching the people do the things and absolutely not I've actually still maybe now that I've got into real estate I've seen maybe one or two shows like episodes oh, okay <laughs> but so I've you... never seen any of any of that stuff at all I've never like interested me mm -hmm. and um, now that I'm you know kind of even more in it, like, okay maybe I'll watch an episode of something and I think I, I've watched like one or two episodes of the show <laughs> so but it still is not it's like... so different being in it you know like filming the thing that would be like watching on TV because they're, yeah, they're they're dramatized for TV. I mean, they got to make them a show. It's not it's yeah. not a documentary. Yeah, and it's that's, a show. <laughs> and that's the funny thing too. Is from when um me anyways, and a lot of other people, when you making TV, you don't really necessarily watch it. You just that's make true. it. Like you don't really watch it. <laughs> yeah, I actually saw a thing an interview with Johnny Depp one time, and uh, I, I forget who it was. It might have been like 
Jay Leno or somebody, but they asked him like if he ever watches any of his movies, and he mm-hmm. said he's never seen any of his movies. <laughs> so like he he just plays the character. They make the movies, you know, whatever he does, he's done with yeah. it at that point. Yeah. So it's kind of funny too that you say that. You worked on these shows, some of them. Mm-hmm. You know, like you did a lot of other stuff yeah. too, but uh, on some of these real estate shows, and so yeah, many a people build shows, and yeah, so, like some people come to the club or they come to us, and like they got into real estate because they saw like flip or flop on uh-huh. TV. You know, like they saw one of these shows, and that's what kind of made them think, like, oh, I could do that. You know, and then they come down and they they start getting involved in the club, and then they start doing deals of their own. But like, it's uh, it's kind of funny how you, you were like directly involved with these shows, and and that you, at all, and did, that did didn't get you me. into it, no, in the least, which is funny, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, so, so you're, uh, do, you're doing like shows for not just like the house building shows, we did other yeah, reality all kinds of, yeah. stuff, and those you know those uh, couple famous couple shows, some of that stuff, a little bit of what, everything. What's, what's a famous couple show? Uh, so there's a show on, I think it's on, uh, E it's, uh, um, Ashley and Evan, it's, uh, Ashley Simpson and Evan Ross, okay. Ross son. So I think that show may, they, we just uh, shot the first season of that last year. So I okay. was like, yeah, and you know, but they have all the, you know, the Kardashians or so any couple that's famous, uh-huh. th- you know, those are like the famous couple shows. Okay. So yeah. you've, you've been involved in some of those too. Yeah. Yeah. And those are all hundred percent legitimate. Oh yeah. yeah Everything's absolutely. real. Hundred percent real. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's no it's no secret anymore that some of that stuff is uh, not not scripted, but maybe set up. So here's the thing I, I'll tell you, and because everyone always thinks, oh yeah, this stuff's scripted. So this is what from coming from someone in the industry, it's not scripted. We just coach them. Yeah. So when you, a situation, for example, if they're going to go into a, um, you see them at a restaurant and they're like. Uh, talking about something or arguing about something right we told them ahead of time like okay we're going to go to this restaurant and we need you to talk about this and then once they get in there they know what they need to do but we don't tell them what to say we just say it needs to circle around this topic right and so that's kind of how it's set up so it's not really scripted we just kind of coach them on what needs to happen so you need to you real housewife lady need to get over here and talk about brooks having cancer or not having cancer yeah <laughs> and then if you cry that'd be great so if you can yeah, cry please, that'd be great yeah please cry yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the background, like, please cry. Please I know, cry. please cry. <laughs> like, like you guys can put some like raw onions out there on the table or something, you know. It's <laughs> um, funny, and then when they do cry, then you see the producers in the background. They're also crying because they're so happy that they're crying and it's going to look good on TV, and everyone's all crying. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's a show. It's yeah, it's part of the thing. But uh, we keep it real here. You yeah, know, this isn't this nothing here is staged. We don't rehearse anything. I didn't coach you ahead of the show and tell you, you know what we're going to talk about. I think we're going to just lay it on you and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. But, so we're, so, uh, so we're where are we up to? We're, so right now we're, we're, doing we're not even real estate. Real estate yeah, so we're exactly. in TV. So I'm in TV. I've been doing it for 13 years and you know, there's a lot of travel in TV. I was always traveling somewhere mm-hmm. long hours, especially I lived um, 60 miles outside of, you know, Hollywood. Yeah. So my commute times were like two hours in two hours out. Mm-hmm. So a lot of time was spent there and so it was a lot of fun while I was single, but <laughs> you know, as I got older and I had, you know, I had a daughter and now I'm married you know, just spending a lot of time away from my family. Yep. Just, I mean, I leave at five thirty in the morning, get home at eight thirty at night, just right. have dinner and go to sleep and just kiss my daughter. At hi. And then, yeah. Hi. And good night. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I know that, I know that life. It's yeah. I've, I've been in that, in that world myself. Yeah. So, so here I am in TV. And then the other thing about TV is it's hit or miss. You're working on something and then you're not working on something. You have some time off until you get the next gig. Right. Sometimes that time off is, you know, two weeks. Sometimes it's three months, sometimes like a year. So I uh, had my, we had our daughter, and um, after that, I didn't have another job for a year. Wow. So I'm trying to make ends meet here. And I'm, so I you know, start driving Uber to make the ends meet. And okay. I'm driving Uber full time at this point, you know, 12 hours a day, five days a week, basically. Wow. Um, and then what happened was I was you know, listening to the radio all day long for like 12 hours a day. And I, and I hated these songs. I just would hear them <laughs> over and over and over like Adele's like, hello from, it was like <laughs> on every five minutes. And I hate it. I just got tired of the music. And I was like, I need something else besides music, you know, whatever. So I was like, uh, I discovered audiobooks. So I'm like, okay, let me let me try to get an audiobook. So I just just want to listen to music anymore. Yeah. And I read the first the first book I bought was um, was actually How to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh, okay, that's an old book. Yeah, listen, that one that was Dale life- Carnegie, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Life changing. It totally per- changed my perspective on how I do business, how I talk to people. My, my whole life changed from that book. Yeah. I'm like this is awesome. I read. I want to read another book. So the next book I read was Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh, okay. And the, that, ga- the Gateway book. This yeah. Is the gateway drug book. Yeah. And and the, you know you know why I realized why it was a gateway is because when I read that book, um, 
my eyes open when I, I always thought growing up that real, you know, investors were people that they had a lot of money mm -hmm. and they bought, you know, houses with a lot of money and made a lot of money. So whenever we'd, you know, come across investors when I was a kid, my mom would always say, oh, that's, they're investors. They make, you know, they have a lot of money and they buy stuff and they, you know, whatever. So whenever I heard the word investors, it was a turnoff. Okay, that means they have a lot of money. Right. They make a lot of money. I'll never be that, you know, this and that. Yeah. But when I read that book, I, I learned for the first time, I, I learned that you don't need money to become an investor. Nope. And, and that my eyes just was like, what what the heck? I've been yeah. lied to my whole life. I didn't know this whole time I could have been making all this big money because <laughs> I thought I needed money, you know, a lot of money. Yeah. And you don't even need money. You can do it with no money. No money, yeah. So that's my, my eyes open, my world open. And from that point on, you know, when I'm driving Uber, I, all I did was read real estate books, real estate books, and I knew that I – now I knew that I could do it and I want to learn how to do it. Right. So – Rich Dad Poor Dad was, I mean, and that's, you're, you're not the only one. I mean, so many people, I'd say probably at least like 70% of the people that have come on the show have said they read Rich Dad Poor Dad. That's kind of what got me into the industry too. I mean, I, because uh, I, I was already, I already had an entrepreneurial like mindset, but I, I was still kind of like grappling with the fact that like, you know, my parents wanted me to go to college. They wanted me to get a regular job and, you know, they thought that. Uh, if I'm going to pursue something else, call it music or acting or, you know, like whatever I was, you know, cause I was always a creative person. I mm -hmm. thought I, I actually thought I might go into the entertainment industry at uh -huh. some point. Um, I originally, when I was in high school, I went and like looked at, uh, USC's school of, uh, filmmaking or whatever. Yeah. Cause I was thinking about becoming like a writer or something like that doing. So okay. I actually had that kind of in my mind to do at some point, but they told me I need to get the degree as a fallback. That's what they always told oh, okay. me. Have this fallback plan. So, you know, if my my career as a creative person doing whatever it is that I wanted to do, if that didn't work out, then I'd have this thing I could fall back on and I could always have this job and, you know, whatever. Um, but I hated it. I hated the <laughs> idea of it. Never really wanted to go to college that bad. You know, like, like I, the only reason I went was because, you know, it was my parents kind of yeah. encouraging me to do that. But, you know, I had this entrepreneurial drive. Like I had a couple of businesses before I even exited high school. Oh. So I, uh, I uh, <laughs> ended up reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad when I was like 18. And, you know, it really just sort of like put like, another person's perspective on it. I'd never heard anybody else talk about entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship never heard about anybody talk about it. so like when robert kiyosaki talks about you know his his path to like becoming uh, a real estate investor it's you know for me i'm like okay like <laughs> this is what i tell people now when they when when i tell them i want to be a real estate investor or i want to be an entrepreneur this is what i can tell people yeah. so that they can understand and you know what at that point i didn't care what anybody said yeah yeah and um I think it's that's a, that's what it, what it is. I think that might be the the common thread is like it's that moment when you're you know you've you know a lot of us don't you know learn about finances where kids we don't know about you know, finances and investing all that mm -hmm. stuff we don't know about that. But it's that moment when you're reading that book when you first find out like you don't need money yeah to make money because yeah. you've always told it takes money to make, it takes money to make money real or real well it state. does it does take money it just doesn't have to be your money you know <laughs> yeah. that's the thing I yeah. mean and. Yeah, some of those old adages, they're great. They make perfect sense. It's just they didn't add that caveat, and they're like, yeah, it does take money to make money, but it doesn't have to be your money. Yeah, and it's that <laughs> moment in that book when you read that, they're like, oh, my God, and then and then you're like, I, I want it. Now I know I can do this. Now let's let's do this. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it's funny because, like, this show, like, we don't, we're not affiliated with Rich Dad, Poor Dad in any way. We're not – I don't know Robert Kiyosaki. <laughs> I've never met the guy. But, you know, we end up talking about him so often on the show. And uh, for anybody that's out there listening, like – you could buy the book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. It's on Amazon. It's cheap. You know, it's yeah. like under twenty dollars for this book, and it's life changing for so yeah, many really people. Is. But you can also get it as an audio book through mm -hmm. through Amazon. But even so, like there's there's people that read the book themselves and post the video on Amazon I mean, on YouTube. It's free. You could literally hear the book read by somebody that wasn't the official, you know, <laughs> audible version. But because I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with you reading a book and just happening to film the thing. Like apparently, wait, they they film themselves reading the book. They just record the audio. It's not oh. you don't even see the person. They just okay. record the audio. Like I, I literally just listened to Rich Dad Poor Dad again, and I, that's how I did it. I just went on YouTube because YouTube uh, will save your oh. spot. So instead of like having like to have a subscription, some sort of like buy an audio book, you can just go on it's YouTube, hundred percent free, and listen to someone read it. Like yeah, I, I want to take everybody's excuse out of it. Like there are people that post this thing on YouTube, Rich uh, Dad Poor Dad. They read the entire book. Okay. <laughs> You know, it's just so there you go. You have no excuse. You don't have to pay twenty bucks to buy the book. You don't got to pay five bucks to get the yeah. audio book. You can go for free on YouTube and listen to it. And listen to it for free. But and you can do that with a lot of books. It's not just okay, Rich wow, Dad Poor Dad. It's another eye opening thing. <laughs> so, but are the do they read them like as sexy as the uh, the actually the audible? guy the guy that did the one I listened to? He wasn't half bad. Like you know, <laughs> I mean, do they got the radio voice? I deep think I think he had book. a better radio voice than I do. You know. <laughs> 
is like rich dad poor dad read to you by you know like, i can't even do it right now you know like they before i started the radio show they gave me just intense crazy training here on exactly how to train my voice and speak exactly yeah, the did way well. it, it, supposed to do yeah they told me <laughs> this is how you do it you know vocal coaching for i don't know how many sessions you know no just kidding they didn't give me any training i just came in here and started talking into a microphone one day it was pretty uh, interesting. <laughs> if you guys are white, you can go back and check out episode number one. We had Jim Keller oh, here as our guest. That was your first one? That was our first one. Oh, yeah. We were actually on our way to Las Vegas. Uh, we stopped to do the show, and then we went to Vegas to go to a seminar on uh, property management oh, and master yeah. leasing. It was a great seminar. But so was your episode one here, was that your first time on the radio, or had it been on the radio before? So I was actually on the radio. There was... Uh, uh, there's a lady on the on KCAA. Her name's uh, Bev, uh, and she does a show called Let's Go Shopping with Bev. And uh, she had me come on the show. Me and Stephen McKee, actually, we both came on the show. Uh -huh. uh, there was a few weeks prior to our first show. Okay. So uh, we had like that one experience to go on on how we should run the thing. And yeah, it was pretty fun, pretty, uh, pretty interesting how it's gone. I don't know where Bev is. She used to have a show on right before mine, but where, where did she go, Nick? Uh, she, uh, she moved. She's still on Thursdays, but she moved to 2 p.m. Oh, so she just didn't want to see me anymore? Is that what it was? Uh, that's what I was told, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I figured. Yeah, no. I'm we, just kidding, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> we love Bev, Bev and Rich. They're great people. I just, you know, I don't get to see them. That we have another, we have U-Turn Radio on right before us now. So, yep. uh, you know, and they're good people too. I like having all these folks around. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time where I didn't have any show before. It was like a, a sports show or something like that that was recorded somewhere else. And so there was nobody in the studio. I used to be able to come in early and make all kinds of noise, but... Now we got to come in and be quiet and be respectful of who's on the, <laughs> the air. But, you know, anyway. Because they're all finding out that AM radio is where it's at. It's exactly. I mean, this, you know, they now can't. Now there's a line of people outside <laughs> before we came in there after us. <laughs> yeah, they're, they are trying to get on the air. I mean, they're having a hard time picking which show to put on next because <laughs> KCAA, as you all know, is the stadium, the studio that leaves no listener behind. And we cover every single person and every taste here. So, yeah, you can listen to uh, any book you want on YouTube. And uh, so, yeah, those of you driving, listening to the show right now, you have no excuse. Uh, yeah. Listen to Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's, you can listen to it for free on YouTube. Obviously, you should support Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah. <laughs> at some point, I think you should buy the book. Or at some point, you should maybe uh, pay for the audio book yeah. and uh, listen to the guy that reads it from, from them. It's, you know, he's got a really good voice for reading books. But, uh, yeah, so you so you started you read Rich Dad Poor Dad. You're driving yep. Uber, yeah, and so, it like just revolutionized your way of thinking. Yeah, driving Uber, and then so I just got to the point where you know we we're at that point, you know, just driving all the time, and like I have a you know I needed to make a choice. I can listen to music all day long while I'm you know, I'm, you know driving Uber, or I can like be productive and like better myself and learn something, and that's what I chose. Like I want to mm -hmm. learn about this, and what better way is while I'm in my car making money already, right. I'm learning how to make even more money. So when people would get in the car, because occasionally you have to pick people up, would you keep the... <laughs> then the, the, I got to change the station to like... Oh, so you go back Clark? to something else. Change right. the station, put on the like... Yeah, here's Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Like, here's Adele again. Great. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes it'd be in real, a really good book where like, oh my God, please let this ride be over so they can get out of my car and I can switch back to the other yeah. book. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I can, I can relate to that in other instances because I would listen to audio books a lot of times when I'm going in between houses. We'd... You know, we'd sort of set up a path of like houses to look at in one day. Oh, yeah. So it's like uh, there's a cool piece of software. I think it was through the MLS uh, where you could basically put in all the addresses that you're going to hit and it would map it out oh, for yeah, you to, to get, yeah. create the most like uh, efficient map to like get from point A to point B. So you like started at your office, go to all these different houses, end at your office. And it was pretty cool. So like we'd have these like things. And I remember I used to listen to audiobooks a lot. But, you know, sometimes you're only driving for like three minutes in between oh, yeah. houses. And you're like, <laughs> like you'd sit in the driveway, like listening to this thing. And I remember one time I sat in the driveway and the neighbor like comes up. <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, what are you doing? This is a vacant house. Like, what are you doing parked in the driveway? And I'm like, oh, I'm actually <laughs> interested in potentially buying this. I'm here to look at the house. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I, I was just, I was listening to a book. and I didn't want to turn it off, you know. <laughs> so it was like pretty funny sometimes you get approached by these neighbors i don't know if that's happened to you yet or not but no no sometimes people are like they're very aware of what's going on in the neighborhood oh yeah and like sometimes uh, it's mrs because, kravitz yeah. yeah exactly mrs kravitz that's andy's favorite thing <laughs> um andy teasley but he uh yeah these neighbors like a lot of times it's because there's like kids hanging out and they go into these homes and they like you know vandalize them and oh, stuff yeah. and some neighbors just coming over there to make sure that you're not going to break in and vandalize it. 
which is kind of nice. I like those people. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, cool. sometimes they accost uh, us thinking we're going to go in and do the same thing, and they come at us really hot, you know, yeah. like, like, what are you doing here? You know, I'm like, uh, is this your house? I'm sorry I didn't know you. Know, like, it's pretty funny. But anyway, so you read these yeah. books. People get out. So actually, I mean, now I realize that we're on the radio right now. There, there could be some Uber drivers right now that are trying to better themselves listening to this right now. I, I would so, think that there should be. So if, if there are, I mean, shout out to all my Uber and Lyft people out there that yeah, are exactly. learning about real estate while they're working because – yeah, I mean, you have no excuse, you know, mm-hmm. if, if you're in that situation where you're, you know, doing this to make ends meet, instead of, you know, listening to the radio, like, learn something, you know, like, listen to us, learn about investing, mm-hmm. you know, listen to those audio books, and then, you know, like, it's been a couple of years since, I, from when I was there, and now here I am, you know, doing, working with you guys, trying to do deals, and so it's, use that time. I call it Uber University, you Uber, know, like, Uber you're, you're in the car, right. you're Ubering, you're learning something that you want to, you know, be better at, and it's your Uber University. Yeah, so you, you made the big jump. You just went from, I listened to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, <laughs> I'm driving Uber, now I'm working with you guys. There's a huge gap in there, so. <laughs> and that's um, the story. Yeah, that was it. That's all that happened. Um, uh, so, like, basically oh, from yeah. listening to the books, and then, like, yeah. At some point, you came to our investment club, right? Yeah. Was that sort of like the next major step you had made, or like so? What, what even got you to the? There's probably club? one more step before I went to the club. So okay. I, was, I was, you know, listening to all the books. So I, re- I listened to all the books I could, and then I ran out of books. And then, okay, then I learned. Uh, I learned about podcasts. I never learned. I never knew about oh, yeah. podcasts. So actually, what happened that's was a, that's a deep, deep rabbit hole right there. <laughs> yeah. What happened was, um, I after I finished reading all the investor books that I could. I went to YouTube like, well, let me, I still want to learn more about investing. So mm-hmm. I went to YouTube, typed in real estate investing, and you know, I found a, a video, a YouTube video, but it was a podcast that was recorded uh, kind of like this, but it was Bigger Pockets. Okay. And then I was Brandon like, what Turner. is this? Well, yeah, I'm like, what is this Bigger Pockets stuff? And then I learned about podcasts. Yep. And I subscribed to that podcast, and now I had a whole new <laughs> you know, world of uh, you know, real estate knowledge to learn from. Yep. So I, now, I'm, now I'm listening to podcasts and driving you know, Uber. Now I graduated I was, you know, from my freshman year in Uber, right. listening to books. Now I'm listening to podcasts. Right. There you Uber. go. Um, some, then, some people don't do the books. They just go straight to podcasts. <laughs> you know, that's uh, yeah, that's one one way to go. But I we appreciate them because they listen <laughs> to this show and I they do talk, they come up and tell me that they they heard the show. I'm like that's kind of cool. I didn't know I actually had people that listen. But yeah, you know. So, I so now I'm on podcasts and then um, so I'm like okay, well I'm, I know all the I mean I know all this stuff about real estate. I I've, you know I read all these books. I'm mm-hmm. listening. I know how to do this stuff, and I just kind of knew it, but I just wasn't didn't you know where to go with all this knowledge I had. I knew you know what they tell you to do but i was kind of still afraid mm-hmm. but one of the episodes of the podcast i think he said like he's saying you know talking to newbies like get out there go to your local rias and blah blah, blah and this and that i'm like rias what is that yeah and um and then they you know i looked it up and it was a real estate investment club and like i had no idea there was clubs for real estate investors yeah. like so now i'm like now like a new thing okay now what is this <laughs> And so yeah, going on to your junior and senior year. Of, uh, yeah, that, that's junior <laughs> senior. Yeah, so yeah, junior here. I'm in junior year of Uber University. Right. <laughs> um, I look up. I'm googling. You know, in between rides at Uber, I'm googling what is a, a RIA, and then it's okay. Real estate investment club. So I like typed in. In an Empire Real Estate Investment Club, or may, maybe it wasn't right dead on the nose. Maybe it's yeah. like Rancho Cucamonga Real Estate Investment Club. I'm sure it showed two. up anyway. Yeah. First thing that comes up was the Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club. Yep. I'm like, oh, crap. There's That's a this, great club, this, by the way. Yeah. Amazing club. <laughs> Big, a lot of people. So then I'm like, there's this whole club thing where people go in and they talk about this. And so I knew that that's what they were pushing on, you know, the podcast is go to these and meet people. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I guess that's the next step. That's what I got to do. And yep. and so, I, I, you know, talking to myself and I was just really nervous about going to this. I didn't know what it was going to be like. It was going to be right. five people, 20 people, 100 people. And not know anybody and how to, like, so I was like really nervous. And I remember you came all, you came dressed to the nines. Like, I, I think you wore a full on suit, I didn't probably, you? <laughs> I, I, basically, yeah. Well, it's funny because a lot of people I think have that idea. Like, I'm going to be meeting with all these like real estate investors. These are big money people. Yeah. You know, they obviously dress like business people and, you know, uh, it's such a misconception. I mean, I think probably one of the richest people that comes to our meeting looks like he's homeless. I mean, like, <laughs> you, know, you should see his truck. It's like 14 years old, you know, no, not 14. It's probably like 24 years old. Yeah. You know, like it's 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 so funny how things change like you know i i call myself the flip-flop investor i usually just wear a t-shirt shorts and shit and and um and uh and flip-flops but the uh <laughs> the like some of the people like you could tell they're new almost because they come in they dress really really nice and you're like you know i need to dress that nice most of the guys yeah. that actually do this don't really dress like that yeah, yeah. so i don't know i was just so uh, here I, here yeah, i hadn't got to the club yet so i, I just learned about the clubs and right. i'm trying to talk myself to go to one to go to this meeting mm-hmm. You know, at the mission in and all, I'm like, okay, I, I know I need to, because I need, this is the next step for my career. I have to do this. I have mm-hmm. to get over this fear of 
I don't have no idea what's going to be there when I go to this club. Right. So I remember I got there uh, a little early. I went to a bar like nearby and I was like, okay, I need, I need a drink. So I need to <laughs> calm my nerves. I don't know what's going to be in, in this thing when I, you know, I, I was just afraid it's going to go be a group of like eight people and really uncomfortable. And oh, just, okay. like, wow. And then, and, and I'm like, you know, it's an investment club. I'm not an investor, you know, so that was my, you know, I okay, just wanted, so you were, you were worried by going that you were going to like, like, upset people maybe like that like here you're just so like easy. this guy's not an investor why is he here what is he doing you yeah. know <laughs> you know it's funny because like half the people that come every single month to the investment club are first timers number one and number two they haven't actually done anything in real estate they're still in the learning stage yeah. which is great because yeah and i didn't learn that till later on <laughs> yeah i know and, and, and a lot of people do because you're not the first one to tell me that but like you know when i got started i didn't know about rias i like mm-hmm. the only real estate meetings i went to were like real estate agent type like board meetings and like they did these caravan things in Moreno Valley. I used to go to these, like we'd go to like office meetings and stuff like that. That's what we would go to because my mom was an appraiser and that was her like primary source of business was mm-hmm. through real estate agents. So we would always just go to these meetings with the real estate agents and that's how I met like so many people in the very, very beginning. Uh, and it wasn't until and like, then I went to like my first like real estate seminar, okay. you know, like one of these ones where they try to sell you yeah, like the seminar, really expensive yeah. boot camp and stuff. I went to one of these things, one of these meetings, and then I meet all these other people, but most of them were new. And like, there was just like a couple people in there that like were not new. They were like actually doing real estate investing, you know, and they were there just looking for fresh blood essentially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like it was, it wasn't until years later. I mean, it wasn't until 2000 maybe 2013, 2012, that I went to my first real estate investment group, you mm-hmm. know, meeting. And that was out in Orange County. Okay. Uh, that was the first one I ever went to was out in Orange County. And then I found out there was one in Corona. So I started oh, going to that closer, for a little yeah. bit. And then they shut the one in Corona down. And then we started ours. We started oh, okay. the Illinois Empire Real Estate Investment Club because there wasn't another one in Riverside, not one, you know, like anywhere near here. The nearest yeah. one was in Coachella Valley, you know, and then the next nearest one to that was like Pasadena. You know, or you can go to the ones out in like Irvine and stuff. So like we had nothing in the Inland Empire. Yeah. So, that's, so there was a need. Mm-hmm. There was a need. And you know what? It's like now we're like the largest club. Yeah. It's crazy. Like we did not expect this going into it. <laughs> but, you know, now it's here. Now it's this big old thing. And uh, it's great because all these people that are trying to learn, there's a lot of people that come that are mentors that come every single month because we do a lot of business with all the more senior people, mm-hmm. you know, and like all the senior people do a lot of business together. So we keep coming to like bring our new deals. Like this is like once a month we get to see each other and yeah. then the new people come cause they want to learn from us. So it's a nice little trade. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if anyone's, you know, listening out there, you know, they're not scary. Just kidding. Right. <laughs> they, it's a little intimidating. I could see that, you know, cause it's, it's big. There's a lot of people like it's going to be a little intimidating, but yeah. just face your fears. Nobody's there to hurt you. Yeah. You know, everybody's like at our club anyway, everybody's very, very nice, very helpful. Yeah. You know, I can't speak for other clubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny cause you know, it did take me a little bit of talking myself and I've, you know, I'm a, I'm a sociable person. I'm you are, extrovert. you're very yeah. social, but it took me, you know, I had to talk myself into this for, you know, to go, cause, yeah, I had no idea what it was and um i did and i'm and I'm glad i did so you yeah. know i went and uh, i remember uh the first meeting i went to the uh you guys did a ha- you do a haves and wants section where you mm-hmm. go up and say if you have anything or if you want anything and then i'm sitting there and i see these people going up and I'm like I, sh- I should just go up there and introduce myself say i'm i'm isaac and i'm an investor and, and i want to learn from you know yeah. whatever so i got in the, the back of that line and then when it was my turn i went up and i said Something like, hey, hi, my name's Isaac Mesa. Um, today's my first day of being a real estate investor. <laughs> and, that, and, every, and that guy really got a chuckle. And, yeah. um, and a lot of people came up to me afterwards because they're like, what, do you, you woke up today and decided you wanted to be an investor? Because <laughs> it's his first day. <laughs> uh, I was like, no, I mean, I've been learning this, you know, but it's funny that I said that because, I mean, that was really the first big step that actually got me, you know, into the world. You know, before right. I was just learning, educating, and not really doing anything, but going to that meeting was the first step when I was like, okay, now I'm networking, now I'm building a now network of people. Now you're a real estate investor. And that could, yeah, it's official I mean, that, that day. Yeah. It <laughs> <laughs> could be like, you know, this, you know, big day was that was that day one. That's awesome. At the meeting, yeah. And I, I see, and I remember you doing that too, because I, <laughs> I was standing like right on the side of the stage. I remember when you saying that. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> it was either, either you or Steven that like gave me like a high five or a thumbs up or something. Like, yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, I just went up and just, yeah. I just wanted everyone in the room to know who I was because 
you know, I'm like, okay, this is this is networking. I want people yep. to know me. <laughs> yeah, now you're a regular. I mean, you're you're here, right, you're there all the time. Because yeah. it was so much fun. I was like, I gotta go. This was fun. Yeah. Like, and then you go once and you get hooked and you just go back. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've been. Let's see, we we've had uh, two meetings so far this month, and you've been at both of them. The cash flow meeting on the first Wednesday, yeah, yeah. you were there, and then uh, you were at the let's make a deal meeting. We just had that's right. Yeah. Last Wednesday, last week. Yeah. Now I go to not not even the main one. I go to all the all the other ones, the subsidiary meetings. Exactly. Too. Yeah. And then we have, let's see, well, we have uh, Saturday morning coffee coming up this Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, and then we have the main monthly meetings coming up next, next week month. on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll be at both of those or are you coming to coffee? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to, I usually don't go on the Saturday ones because actually I'm still part-time Uber University. I get, I'm getting my master's. Okay, good. So going Friday, back. Yeah, yeah. Friday nights <laughs> is like, uh, you know, just to get a little extra money. I still go out Friday night, oh, all night. Point. Yeah. So Saturday, I night, Saturday I sleep in. I can't no, get no, up. You got to uh, pull an all-nighter, you know, do an all-nighter, <laughs> stay up late Friday, come in, you know, completely dead tired on Saturday morning. It'll be, it'll be fun for all of us. <laughs> oh man. I and did then that. I give someone a ride home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, why yeah, you not? need a ride home. Oh man, I what did we do? We I think we had like an event we went to, and it was on a Friday night, like right before the uh, Saturday morning coffee, mm-hmm. and I I got like an hour and a half of sleep. It was so rough. Like, and I got to show up the next morning. I'm usually like the first one there because I got to put up a sign and a couple other things. You know? Oh yeah. Oh god, I remember that. I was like so tired and hungover, and like it was it was rough. I'm like never again am I doing that because <laughs> that was so hard. I was like this close to just canceling it. <laughs> <laughs> but so many people go to that. It's like our second biggest thing we do right now. Yeah. Last lot. last time we did, I think we had about like 70 people show up to the uh, yeah, coffee, lot. which is crazy. Oh, that's cool. That's fun. But we love the coffee. Lyft coffee is good stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, since I'm since I'm mentioning it, people are probably wondering, hey, well, how do I find out about this? Go on meetup.com. Yeah. If you go on meetup.com, uh, just look for the Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club. We're right on there. Uh, we're, you know, the club, it's, we've got over 4,500 members. Uh, so that that's the club that we're in. Organized by Todd Bear, myself, and Stephen McKee. Uh, you'll see our dumb-looking pictures up there wearing suits, which is somewhat misleading, I guess, people have told <laughs> us. But, uh, yeah, look for us on Meetup, or you can Google it. We're, you know, usually the first result if you type in Illinois Empire Real Estate Investment Club. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, come on out. Good group of people. Um, that cash flow meeting actually is like one thing I want to mention because we were talking about Robert Kiyosaki. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's a board game he there created. He made this board game called Cash Flow, which is – it's, you know, it's kind of a souped up version of Monopoly, a more realistic version of like what a real estate investor's life would be like. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of playing Monopoly mixed with like the game of life a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. and you're, uh, yeah, your, your goal is to get out of the rat race, you know, because yeah. you have a profession and like, you know, last time I played, I think I was an airline pilot or something like that, had a really a, nice salary. I was a janitor. You, see, oh, so you probably won then. <laughs> it took a while, but <laughs> well, yeah. it's not about winning. It's about getting out of the rat race. You probably got out first. In, uh, in took, yeah, I actually did, but yeah. Not, <laughs> it took a while still. Yeah. It still takes a while because you got to go several turns, and you, know, you get presented with different deals. Yeah, I didn't and, get any deal. That's That was why, because I, I just wasn't getting any deals. Oh, you were getting like, like you were landing on different spaces yeah, that didn't have not deals? Yeah, deals, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, but you still got out first, even yeah. without the deals. But yeah, it's fun, man. We we get together. It's a, the round the uh, round table clubhouse in Highland, um, yeah. so that's uh, it's pretty fun. We just get some pizza and you know salad yeah. and it's, breadsticks. It's and... super fun, and yeah, you said it's just like a souped up version of Monopoly. But the the good thing about it, the cool thing that makes it different than you know just a more version of Monopoly is that it uses the terms investment terms. Right. So you you start to become familiar with these terms with the ROI and and all these stock stuff and just all these terms that you yep. know, don't use on a regular basis. I, I bring my wife to this and um, mm-hmm. just because she has doesn't know anything about real estate except for just what I tell her. So she kind of basically went in here and one year out the other. Yeah. So I bring her to this um, just because I wanted to kind of like learn about this stuff. And she yeah, she's kind of learning about this stuff. Like the other day she had a, this someone at our table had this deal where um, it was kind of tricky. They were going to pass on it, but someone else explained, it. no, you can do this. And it and it is a deal because they thought it wasn't, but they figured out how, how yeah. it was a deal. And then my wife was she like five minutes later because she missed why it was a deal. She's like, wait, how, why was that a deal again? What did she do to make it a deal? Like, oh, yeah. see, you're, see, you're learning. So Yeah, now she's curious. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's good. To, yeah. So I, I like bringing her because she gets to learn about these terms and, you know, become familiar with with right. investing terms and just anyone else. Yeah, you, you just you play Monopoly but using real life terms and situations. Yeah, and it's a cheap date night. I mean, we charge 10 oh, bucks yeah. at the door because, you know, it's we do have pizza. I and, think and she said, I think really she said the only reason she comes is because she gets pizza. Yeah, that's got to be it, you know. <laughs> that's it. That's like <laughs> what but, uh, she said. I, what I like about the game too is that it's collaborative, you know. So like you're not playing against the other players. In, like in a lot of cases oh, yeah, you're, yeah. you're you're doing these deals, you know, with other players in the game. So, you know, like 
I might have some money. I can contribute to that deal, so I'll be your lender on it. They're able to buy the deal, so they get the cash flow or whatever. But I'm getting you yeah. know interest payments or something like that. So it's it's cool how you can play the game. Yeah, it's, you're right. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it really isn't competitive. It's it's we're all doing this. We all have the same goal. Right. And then we're all trying to teach each other what you do or you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You were, yeah. You never. I never really see us. But we're all trying but, to see. I mean, that's what it's like in real life. Because you know, like we have the investment club, and there's a lot of people at the club, and we all want to. You know, we all want to flip. We all want to buy notes. We all want to do loans. We all want to do all kinds of stuff that are investing in real estate, and we're all in there for the same thing. And mm-hmm. sometimes we're even fighting over the same deal. You know, and I, I don't want to say fighting, but like sometimes we're all interested in the same deal at the same time, and we're all submitting offers on it. And you know, maybe one of the other members of the club is the one that gets the deal. But sometimes you can you can work collaboratively with these people, and we've done it numerous times where we've joint ventured. Mm. You know, like somebody in the in the club, if they wanted to buy a deal, we put up all the capital for it. And in some cases, we've managed the deal for them because if somebody's new and they don't know what they're doing, they kind of want to lean on somebody like that has a little more experience because yeah. we'll make sure the rehab goes like it's supposed to go. You know, we have a tendency to reduce the number of hiccups that happen in a deal. It doesn't mean we have no hiccups. Like <laughs> hiccups always come with deals. And especially lately, this rain's been killing us. But um, you know, we're uh, it, that's like we work, we work, we work collaboratively with other people, and that's yeah. I think that's the important thing you can get from cash flow is that yeah. this is not a, a solo sport. Real estate's a team sport. Yeah, you know, so, it's so, meant to be played so as a life. team. Exactly. <laughs> you can't yeah. do this alone. Like I tried to do real estate investing alone. You could probably do it, but you're only going to get one, maybe two deals a year. Like that's that's maximum because oh, yeah. if you're going to be like at the property managing the contractors you're going to be you know running and picking up materials all this other stuff plus you know then once you're done with that now you're back to square one you're trying to find the next deal it's 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 a lot of work to do it by yourself and you know you're going to make a few extra dollars doing it that way but i can tell you it is not worth it yeah. like you want a team yeah and plus you you know they're they're your friends too like that's mm-hmm. that's one you know, a great thing from the club too is like a lot of these people that you know from the club like you and steven you yeah. know were like my first friends there were like and I, we're friends and I, I met other people there that you know we see each other on you know monthly or maybe by you know every bi-monthly basis mm-hmm. and we're we're friends we we talk and we you know we see each other at the meetups we all hang out and yeah. talk together and um and it's just like they say you know if you you surround yourself with the kind of people that you want to be Yep. And that's what's, is what's happening. You're developing these friendships. Exactly. And, and now I'm, I'm around investors and realtors all the time. Right. Yeah. And, you know, they, they say it that your your network defines your net worth. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> because if you're around other people doing this, like naturally, you're just going to push a little bit harder and, and, and focus more. Plus, people have good ideas sometimes. And you can yeah. kind of bounce these ideas off people. So... You know, as they go, your network is your net worth. Yeah, yeah. Because you know. and now I think there's a lot. There's a lot of those. Because in Spanish, maybe it's in English too. They say, um, tell, uh, they tell me, who, tell me who your friends, or tell me who your friends are. I'll tell you who you are. Okay. Is that an English saying, or did yeah. I just translate? Okay, yeah. Because yeah. my dad used to always say it in Spanish. How do they but, say it in Spanish? Dime quién son tus amistades. Yo te digo quién es usted. Okay, that yeah. that's exactly yeah yeah, but <laughs> that's almost like a literal translation. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so there's that saying, yeah, you know, and then and then there's the other saying where they say, um, you're the sum of the five people that you hang out with the most. Yeah, that's an English thing. You know, that, yeah, is, that one's English. I don't know. Yeah, that, that that's the English version of what you just said in Spanish. You know, is yeah. that you you are. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. basically the same thing. I mean, and it's so true. I mean. I know that when I was hanging around a lot of people that just wanted to get drunk on the weekends, guess what I was doing? <laughs> you know, like, like it was just, you know, we're working our little stupid jobs at a restaurant and, you know, partying, but yeah. nobody was doing anything. So it was actually uh, one of the first people that kind of like got me to think about investing was a waiter I was working with at the Olive Garden, mm. you know, years ago. Mm. And this is a guy that he just, he was, a, he was in the military, he was in the army, and he was going to school. And so the restaurant job he had was paying for his schooling, but the GI Bill was sending him money for schooling as well, but he didn't need it. Mm-hmm. So he was just taking that money and putting it in the stock market. Uh. And, uh, and he was his whole goal was to like buy a, a fourplex and live in one of the units and rent the other three out and have his rent basically paid for by the other three units. Yeah. Great idea. You know, and yeah. he's now done it. And uh, actually, I just saw him on Facebook the other day. He's like part of the uh, Grant Cardone's, uh, you know, whatever, 10X University or whatever uh, he calls okay, it. Yeah. So. I was like, oh, cool. He's actually doing stuff in real estate now. So, um, yeah, Facebook. You know, like I lost t- like touch with him years ago, but I just saw him pop up on Facebook the other day. I'm like, oh, cool. I got to reach out now and, you know, catch up because who knows? Maybe he's doing something really cool that yeah. I want to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, you know, but I was I, I didn't hang out with him as much because he was so like, you know, he's a military guy. He was very uh, – 
regimented and you know he was very disciplined and i wasn't at that time so like he was hard to be around because i didn't want to be a part of his disciplined ritualistic uh lifestyle yeah so but now i'm kind of like looking you didn't back. surround yourself with him because that's not who you wanted to be exactly i was i was hanging around the, the people that were just partying on the weekends and you know just chasing girls and stuff like that you know but that's definitely not my lifestyle anymore so yeah i've been married now very happily for gosh what's it's been it's gonna be 12 years this year so uh, yeah, congrats. awesome. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. I'm uh, what four months, three months in, three, three, <laughs> four months new. in. Yeah. yeah, you know, that was like it was kind of sudden. I didn't know you were getting married. Then all of a sudden, like, like hey, by the way, I'm engaged. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, like send me your registry. You know, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and then a month later, hey, we're having a baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> we're having a baby. Hey, wait. that's kind of how you know went with me and my wife. I mean, we, you know, we got married, and like literally, like a month later, we were already ready for like, having the first baby. Not having, but we got pregnant. You know, so it was, yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. It was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> babies are tiring. <laughs> so I get tired just even thinking about babies. Yeah. Uh, love them. But, but you know, yeah. that, could, anyway. that goes back around to the whole real estate. I mean, when I was originally saying, I was, you know, originally working in television, spending all my time, mm -hmm. you know, never see it. But now transitioning into this kind of a career allows for me to, you know, spend more time with, with my family. Right. You know, I, before um, I was getting up at 530, getting home at 830. Yep. Now I'm working with over with you all. And, you know, I, at the office at nine, I leave my house at like eight 30, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, you're, like, well, you're going opposite so, of traffic coming yeah. from like Rancho Cucamonga to Riverside. It's, you know, yeah, there's so nobody I mean, on the road. That's two and a half hours extra in the morning I have now. And that's two and a half hours to spend with my daughter. We wake up and, you know, we have breakfast, we get ready for school. Yep. And so there's two, that's two and a half hours right there. Now I, and then I'm getting home at like five o'clock, you know, and then that's an extra, you know, when I was getting home at eight 30, it's an extra three and a half hours. So right. it's. Five, that's six hours a day now with my family now that I have. That you, yeah, you've gotten back this, basically. Yeah, and then hopefully eventually, you know, you get this going on a system where I can just work at home. Right. And now I'm at home all the time. Yeah, exactly. You can be home and, you know, it's, you know, being at home for me is kind of tough. Like, it's, it's hard for me to work from home because, like, I also have all, like, my creature comforts there. So, like... <laughs> You know, I'm really good at telling myself, like, ah, I don't really have to do that. I can get that email out tomorrow. You know, like, I'm really good at that. So sometimes yeah. it's bad for me to be at home. Like, if I'm at work, it's like I can stay focused. You know, but yeah, like, yeah. Uh, man, it's like it's tough sometimes. It's tough to be at the office sometimes, too, because, like, this is a social business and there's a lot of really social people around us. Yeah, and I'm a social person, too. So sometimes it's, yeah. it's tough Basically because we like, all talk a lot at the we, office. We do, man. Like, it's, <laughs> it's tough because, like, you know, sometimes you've really got to get something done. And it's like, like somebody <laughs> cop pops in and you're like, Hey man, I just got a sec. Like, you know, yeah, cool, man. That's a great, that's great. But talk to you later. Then like right after they leave, somebody else comes and you have to, <laughs> yeah. you know, like that's kind of what happened this morning. Like, I think like everybody from rehab one group had made it into my office, like in <laughs> the morning, you know, yeah. like, and like, we're like me and Steve, we had like a meeting this morning with like a political guy and so some other things like. It was just like, ah, oh, you know, like I love everybody in the office, but like sometimes it's just like, oh man, we like, it's like we're trying to focus on this one thing, but we got it done. It's just, you know, like sometimes it's tough. It's tough to be home. Sometimes it's tough to be at the office. Yeah. But it's, you know. it's part of the weather too. You know, it's we were all dark and wet. We were like, oh, let's, let's go talk to somebody. Let's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of depressing. I'm going to go talk to I know. Todd. Got to get rid of the uh, solar aptitude disorder, the <laughs> sad thing that people have like in the. <laughs> In the, in the cloudy states like Washington and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> People in the Midwest, they always, or not Midwest, uh, the Northeast. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think they call it, is it Pacific Northeast? What they call Pacific it? Northeast? No, Pacific no, Northwest. Northwest, yeah. Pacific Northwest. Yep. Yeah. Like Seattle. It's like raining all the time. Yeah. But uh, it's snowing here, right? Everybody's getting snowed on today. Oh, yeah. You just go on Facebook. You see like 20 videos of people <laughs> filming the snow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. At least in uh, where I was, yeah, in Rancho Cucamonga, it was rain or snowing. So I'm not wow. sure. Not Riverside. Is it Riverside's not lower, I think. Not. Yeah. But elevation wise, but it might be. I Rancho's don't know. Rancho's like right on that foot. So was, yeah, you're right yeah. at the foothills. So you're just getting that carryover flurry, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't get to experience it. I saw the videos, though. But <laughs> yeah, somebody had posted this video like it, they live in Iowa. They posted this, you know, photo of like all this white stuff on the ground. I was like, what is that? You know, I don't know what that is. <laughs> is that some kind of white sand or something? You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm a California boy. So. <laughs> all right. OK, so we've gotten off track numerous times and um, we uh, we kind of left off with you going to the investment club for the first time. And like. I think, oh, like, you've been going, you've been going to the investment club for, like, at least, what, two years now? Yeah, I think it's two, this might be the third, yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah, like, because like, I, I can't remember the exact month that you came. Like, June. 
It was it was a June, huh? <laughs> okay. so I, go, I, I got to the meeting and there's a sign that said Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club meetup June whatever, uh-huh. you know. And I was right outside the entrance and I took a picture of it because that was the, uh-huh. that was the day my life was going to change. Nice. So I took a picture of that and I have it in my phone. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> so June, you got it. Like June something. Yeah. June twenty sixteen. I don't know something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's been, yeah. you're coming up on three years. Yeah. Coming up on three years. Yeah. Man, we got to get you a three year pin. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? So let me cover a couple of stuff that we, you know, real quickly. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to these meetings all the time, but basically I'm still working in reality television. Mm-hmm. And so I was trying to do real estate and with y'all when I'm, when I'm not working in between jobs. And right. so I'd be working for a couple months and a half, a two, a one month break in between jobs. All right, let me do real estate. Let me do real right, estate. Right. And it just wasn't enough to get traction. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, like you would disappear sporadically. Yeah. And you'd come back, jump back, on another show. The show. Yeah. yeah. And I'd leave for like three months and like, then I'm done with it. And I'm okay. I'll have one month again. Mm-hmm. Let me get, let me do real estate. And, and you know, it just was never enough traction. I could never get enough traction. And finally I said, I, I can't, with the industry I'm in, I can't just do this on the side. I need some, you know, a nice chunk of time to do yeah. this. And then this was around the time they got married and uh, we had our kids and my wife, you know, she wanted me to be home more for the family because I'm mm-hmm. traveling. I'm spending all my days gone. She's like, you need to do something closer to home. I'm like, oh, perfect. This is a perfect time for me to make, maybe make that transition into real estate. So I decided like, I need to um, make some you know, some money full time in the real estate industry. Mm-hmm. I need I need to be just immerse myself in the industry. So that's when I had finished the show. I had reached out to you and Steven and said, "Hey guys, I'm I'm back again. Yep. You know, but this time I want to stay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Like, is there anything, any job I can do in the industry? I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's in the, you know at, you know anything. It could have been anything. Yeah. Just I just wanted some sort of job I could do in the industry so I can be in the industry full time because I knew I wasn't getting anywhere just doing it. For a little bit of time, right, and then that's when you invited me to come over work with you at RLG. Yep, and I'm like perfect because I just want to be in here. I want to be networking with people, and now I, I feel like I'm making a lot more traction now than I was before because I'm all I'm, I'm surrounded by people in the industry, tw- you know, all day long. Yep, and you know, going out networking. My network is getting bigger, and mm-hmm. and that was the next big good move I made to get in here was you know had to leave that other job and just surround myself in the industry that I yeah. want to be working in. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those, it's a Robert Kiyosaki principle. You know, he, he talks about working to learn, not to earn. You know, like you, like you get a job because you have a specific thing you're trying to learn how to do. And it's like, I think it's a very important thing to work in the real estate industry while you're becoming a real estate investor yeah. because there's so much that you don't know. You know, like you can, you can learn it from all these different places, but it's like, until you work in the industry, like until you start seeing deals actually closing and like things like moving and stuff, until you like meet the people and it's it's just you don't you don't have any kind of reference point. So <laughs> why didn't you tell me this two and a half years ago? <laughs> well, because well, you were you had a job, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's I mean like I I worked for my mom. She was an appraiser. Like it had nothing to do with real estate investing. Like investing came later. Mm-hmm. You know, and like I didn't set out working with her even to become an investor. Like you know I thought it'd be kind of a good segue, but you know, really it was because what I was doing, I wasn't very good at. And I, it was a sales type job. I wasn't a very good salesman at it. So I went to go work for her and she basically could pay my salary that I needed to make at that time to sustain myself. So, you know, I made the transition that way. And then Steve started flipping houses. So once Steve started flipping houses is when I was like, Oh, okay, well, if Steve can do it, he's kind of an idiot. I could definitely do it. You know, so <laughs> what, what year was this? <laughs> this would be two thousand five, I think, is when okay. is when Steve uh flipped that first house. Okay. It was in Marino Valley. Very I remember that because he made me and all my other all of our other friends go out there and we had to like help him build cabinets and all yeah. kinds of stuff. So it was pretty funny. One of my buddies he got too drunk while we were building the cabinets, and he fell over on one of them and completely pancaked uh. the, the cabinet box that we had just built. I remember that. It was pretty funny, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't funny for Steve because this is like he like, took out a loan from uh, Cash Call, you know, like uh. one of these like really short term, like very high interest rate oh, loans, wow. you know, to do this. So he didn't think it was very funny that our friend Billy, you know, smashed that uh, that cabinet. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Billy wasn't his real name though. Yeah, I would never use his real. I would never <laughs> call Billy by his real name on the radio show. And he's definitely not listening right now. Actually, he probably is. He's actually one of the more faithful listeners. And thanks for tuning in, Billy. Uh, we really appreciate that. But um, yeah, heck, he's actually been on the show before. Uh, he's been on the show a couple times. Once as a caller, he called in on one of the live shows oh, wow. we did, and he was on the show at one point because we were talking about real estate tech. He's like a, he's a software engineer, so okay. Um, we were talking about real estate tech and how we can make it better and stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, working in the industry is 
super beneficial. So like, yeah. And like, I mean, I like you, he like, like you said before, we're all friends too. So like, I'm like, you know what? I want to give Isaac this opportunity. Cause I don't, I don't make this offer to just anybody. You know what I mean? Like, it's not something I'm like, here, let me, let me pay you for a while while you learn this industry. Like <laughs> I do, I have, that is not my way of doing things, but, um, you know, we're making it happen. Cause I think this is a good spot for you to be in like you with like your gift to gab. I think, I think <laughs> you'd make a really good, uh, lender. So, <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I lean towards lending. Lending's really my favorite style of investing in real estate because okay. it's hands off. That's cool. And maybe that's, you know, I'm learning this now. Maybe that's where I end up. Maybe, you know, maybe the you might. other, maybe, yeah, maybe I like it. Like, oh, Worst maybe. case scenario, it becomes a tool in your toolbox. Yeah. You know, and that's what I tell people. Like the more you learn about the industry, the more different ways you learn about investing. It's just whenever something pops up, which things do, opportunity gets presented all the time. Like you're going to know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Like if all you ever learned was rental property, then that's all you're ever going to look for and that's all you're ever going to find, mm-hmm. you know, but if you know all these different ways to structure deals, you know, you're like, oh, I could either make this one a rental or I could flip it or I could do a note on this deal or, you know, maybe I'm just going to go in and manage the rehab or I'm a realtor. I could sell it. You know, there's all yeah. these different things you could do. So it's, it's just another, you know, tool in the toolbox and I'm kind of sad you missed out because I did a presentation last night on, oh, on that, originating notes and like, you know, how to buy notes and stuff right, like that yeah. and. Uh, you know, how to buy notes with other people's money. It was a really good <laughs> presentation. And I'm probably going to put together a class on it based okay. upon the feedback I got last night. Um, so once, if I put together a class, I think that'll go on, go mm-hmm. real well. Cause there was a you lot of good I, feedback on that. Oh yeah, it was great. It was actually really good. What I did, cause it was the first time I presented this uh-huh. to anybody. So put together this presentation, kind of agonized over the presentation for a while because mm-hmm. I wanted it to be really simple and presenting like financing is not a simple concept. So like, and it's I so did, exciting. Oh, it sounds so exciting. You know, I know people are just like, man, I can't wait to get into finance. Like, <laughs> but uh, it's exciting when you see the results of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so like I showed people an example at the end of how they could start with their current income, never increasing their income, where they could pay off their house and their car within eighteen years, and then investing that money that they would have paid towards their house and their car mm-hmm. uh, for the rate from the remainder of their 30 year mortgage note uh-huh. and how much money they'd have after just uh, in, in total, it was 40 years. They'd be a multimillionaire. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, just showing people how to do that, like, like that blew people away. Yeah. So, huh. you know, financing is really interesting when you see how it can work for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I guess now you're uh, you're a loan officer at rehab loan group and uh, you yeah, know, it's going real good so far. Yeah, I love it. You know, I, you know, you said you're learning while working, and so it's, I'm meeting a lot of people. And now, and now, you know, deals are starting to come my way. Actually, today, I, you know, someone my, my got an instant message this morning saying, "Hey, I got this deal. You know, can you look at it? Would you be interested in it?" So, yeah, just by surrounding myself, networking with all these people, and and you know, making my network grow with realtors and investors, like now, stuff is starting to come to flow to me. Yeah, and that's- which never would have happened if I would have still been doing my job trying to. Oh, let me inve- be an investor for a month. Yep. Okay. Oh, let me be an investor for another, you know, two weeks. Yeah, yeah. No, it had to take, you know, being around these people and all this stuff. It's a participation sport. You got to be present. It's, you know, you need FaceTime with people. It's social, you know. So anyway, uh, we're running short on time. So before we go, I wanted to make another thing about the uh, Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club because uh, there's a lot of people out there that want to get into the investing world and don't know where to start. So I definitely recommend you come to the Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club. Uh, we do our main monthly meeting on the fourth Wednesday of every month. That's at the Mission Inn in Riverside. If you've never been to the Mission Inn, it's worth just coming for the Mission Inn. I mean, the place yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. It's a historical thing, you know, all that good stuff. So go on uh, meetup.com, look up the Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club. We've got a whole list of all the upcoming meetings on there. Uh, the main monthly meeting is $30, which is really just to cover the cost of the room. As much as we love the mission in, they don't let us do it there for free. So uh, we do have food also. Uh, they have some delicious tacos and coffee and all kinds of good stuff that we've kind of grown it to. And uh, then we also have the cash flow meeting the first Wednesday. The second Wednesday of the month is the deals, the let's make a deal meeting where we try to put together a deal live in the audience and show everybody how we evaluate. And then we have uh, the Saturday morning coffee on the Saturday right before the fourth Wednesday. Sounds confusing. All the stuff is up there on meetup.com. Go on there and, uh, yeah, come out and meet us. You get